Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. I will never leave you or forsake you, says the Lord. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Please be seated. On behalf of the family, I welcome you to the service where we come to celebrate Buck's life. On behalf of the children and Glenda, their families, I extend a welcome and a thank you for coming to share the service where, of course, we saddened, but we've come to celebrate Buck's life. You know, grief is the price we pay for love. No doubt the greater the love, the deeper the grief. As saddened as we are, the family have decided to celebrate his life, a life well lived. So we come today to celebrate Buck's life. Come join us in this celebration. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you're a God of all comfort, and today is not an easy day for us accepting that in the next few moments we're going to be saying our farewell to Buck, our husband, father, friend. Lord, that's difficult for us. But we choose to worship you and to celebrate his life. Let your light shine on our hearts that we may be able to pay our last respects lovingly. Let your grace be upon each of us in this place. Our hearts are saddened, but we remember that grief is the price we pay for love. Help us to celebrate back with joy and gladness, remembering all that you've accomplished in and through him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the beautiful parts of the service is the two beautiful old hymns that we don't really sing these days, um, which really excites me. I might not be as exciting to you, but um, um, the old rugged cross. If you're able to stand, won't you please stand and join us in song.
please be seated. Thank you to Corin, who just switched so uh, easily from the clavinova to the, um, the piano. We do appreciate uh, uh, your kindness, Corin. Won't you join me as we pray? Lord Jesus, we gather this morning as your children, saddened by Buck's death and being parted from somebody who has meant so much to us. We confess, Lord, we question in our hearts why it should be so. But, Lord, we know that all truth comes from you, and all knowledge has its source and its end in you. We know that our vision is limited and our knowledge is partial. So as we stand in the presence of these ultimate realities, knowing that knowledge falls short, in our frailty, we lean as children upon their Father. We take comfort in knowing that you understand our sorrow, for at the tomb of your friend Lazarus you wept. You understand our many, many questions. Lord of life and conqueror of death, you are our help in every time of trouble. In the presence of death you comfort us, who mourn. We bow before you, believing you bear our grief and share our sense of loss. Give us grace to worship you, to trust in your goodness and mercy, and assure us that because Jesus lives, we also live. God of grace, God of power, send your Holy Spirit among us that we may hear your promises and know them to be true, and so receive the comfort and the peace they bring through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm going to ask Mark um, if he'll come and share with us uh, some thoughts and some memories of his dad. Thanks, Chris. Morning. Can everybody hear me there? Okay. Morning and thank you for coming here to pay your respects to my dad. I'm Mark, Buck and Heather's son, and I'd like to share a bit of what my dad meant to me. When I sat down and tried to work out what I should say, I came up with a few, a few very important traits and principles that he imparted to us, especially us boys. Dad was a large, loud presence, difficult to ignore. Funny, humorous, he had an infectious laugh. He was interesting, Logical, he, he was a man of high integrity, a family man first and foremost, a loyal friend, kind and generous, a wonderful faithful husband, and lots more. Dad never missed an opportunity to tell anyone who would listen how proud he was of us children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and what were our achievements. Dementia is a terrible disease and it robs us of the cognitive intellectual interaction with that person that we've become accustomed to. I'm glad most of you remember him as he was and not what the disease turned him into. He taught us, and especially me, a few life lessons that we will teach our children and have taught our children. And some of them are, if you shake on a deal, don't break your word. You're only as good as your word. Don't hold a grudge. Sort it out immediately. Strive to be the best you can be. He always said that no one remembers second place. And that put a huge pressure on all of us. Put your family first. Family was the most important thing to him. He always said, and being the consummate salesman, everything is for sale except my family. Be generous to the people that are important to you. He was incredibly generous with his time and other things with his children and grandchildren. Don't loan money to anyone you're not prepared to give it to. So if they fail to pay it back to you, it won't destroy the relationship because that relationship must have been important for you to loan them the money in the first place. Embrace change. Roll with the punches that life dishes out and get on with it. Don't procrastinate. There are no get-rich-quick schemes. Your working life is a marathon and you need to stay the course, work smart, work hard, work long. Don't give up. If someone else can do it, you can too. He used to say, remember you're an Osting. 
There are a couple of funny stories, and I thought I'd just relate two of them because he was a great storyteller, and he always kept us enthralled with his long stories that could take quite a long time to get through. Dad's working life was all about Dad's working life was all about sales. He entered the used car business prior to any books being that had gave the statistics of the buying prices and selling prices of used cars. So you had to use your NAS to buy the cars. There are a couple of used car dealers I can see in the crowd here. Uh, they might be able to remember it. He always said that the advent, advent of these book prices took away the entre entrepreneurship of the operator. Anyway, a story that he loved telling happened in his early days of car sales. He used to visit one of the old used car dealers and buy stock and get pointers on how to sell cars from the self-proclaimed master of this profession, Alex Safi, father of George Safi. Anyway, he walks into the garage just as an irate customer arrives, and the guy shouts, where's Mr. Safi? I want to speak to Mr. Safi. Dad says he made himself very small and thought that he would see how Mr. Safi handled this and maybe learn from it. Mr. Safi came in and the customer shouted, Mr. Safi, you said this car you sold me was in good condition and you gave me a thousand mile guarantee. It's using oil. Mr. Safi apparently calmly asked, how much oil is it using, sir? The customer replied, use two pints in the first hundred miles since I got it. Mr. Safi shouted, Wally, to his mechanic. Wally came running in and Mr. Safi asked him to get two gallons of oil. When Wally returned, he gave the customer the two oils and stated, here we go, this will see out your guarantee. And before the customer could reply, he piled two cabbages, a bunch of carrots, and a cauliflower on top of it, stating, this is for the wife. The customer apparently <laughs> thanked Mr. Safi and left. And Dad said he learned that from that, that the customer is always right, and you need to honor your promises and commitments. Keep your word. When I joined Dad's business in 1989, he used to order his outboard motors from Belgium using a telex machine. I'm sure there are very few people present who know what a telex machine is or how it works. Anyway, with the advent of the fax machine, I thought it prudent for us to get one. He put up huge resistance, but apparently due to my continued persuasions, we got one. I overheard him <coughs> explaining and showing to one of his business associates or friends in his office the wonders of the machine, and how clever the youngsters were with developing this, he embraced change. <laughs> At the time, Peter Jose and, and I formed Automore, and we convinced Nissan and some other franchises that us youngsters were their best bet for the franchises going into the future for this uh, area. We found ourselves short of some capital to make the transaction work. Unfortunately, both Peter and I had exhausted our abilities to to borrow any more money from the banks. We were hocked up to our eyeballs, and I went to go and see him to ask him whether he would extend us some bridging finance, knowing that we had no collateral to give whatsoever. He said, of course, shook our hands, and he said he knows we'll pay him back. I know that he would have just given it to us if things went south. Luckily for us, they didn't. Without him, it possibly wouldn't have happened. Dad and I shared a love of flying, and he owed, owned numerous aeroplanes during his life. In later years, when he no longer flew much, Wayne and I used to joke that all he needed to pursue his flying hobby was an aeroplane in the hangar, a photo in his drawer in the office so that he could show his mates about which aeroplane he had and what he did. For those of you who visited him in his office above Bucks Marine in Beach Road, you might have noticed on the wall he had a poem by Rudyard Kipling, If. I'm sure the older guys might remember it. It was in a nondescript frame on his wall. When I asked him why he had it up there, he said, because that's how you should live your life. The poem closes with a passage that I hold close to my heart, and I'll read it to you. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 <coughs> seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Don't waste time, was the message. Don't waste time. Do what you can do while you've still got the ability to do it. Dad was my mentor, business coach, father. <coughs> my biggest fan, grandfather to my children. I hope that I've lived up to the high moral standard that he set for me. Dad, you're gone from this earthly world, but I won't forget you 
for what you stood for and will continue to pass on these high principles to my family. Glenda, I want to thank you for loving Dad, being with him to the end. It wasn't easy for you. We know that. But you stayed the course, and for that we are eternally grateful. I just want to read an excerpt from Wayne, the message that I gave you from what he taught me, he taught Wayne, but Wayne just said he wanted to put a few things down here. He says, for me to sum up what our father was to me would be impossible to write down. He was my hero. <clears throat> I worked with Buck for over 23 years in East London and Cape Town. Three things he always used to say to me was, never lose your honor, morals or respect, but most of all, don't lose that deal. <laughs> with working with Buck from a, a young age, he molded me into, over the years into the person that I have become, and I'm eternally grateful for that. My era is gone, but our memories will live on forever. I have one more message from his eldest grandson, and the only Osting that's going to carry on his Osting lineage into the future. And I just want to read it quickly to you. Apologies, what happened to it? Uh, yeah, sorry. Wes, Wesley wrote this. It's difficult to select the moments shared with my gramps who played such a major role in my life. With many special memories, these are the ones that stand out most to me. Hunting rats on, in the farm shed. Buying me my first motorbike. Overseas trips to Disneyland, Everglades, Brazil, Mauritius, that Michelle and I will always remember. Taught me to fish. I love going to Cobbin and later fishing down at his house on the river. Gramps was always on my side during good and troubled times with kindness, understanding and encouragement. I'm so happy to have the chance, to have had the chance to introduce my son Cade to his great grandfather. I will ensure that Cade knows he's, he can proudly carry the Osting name and the legacy of Buck. The strong man, the businessman, the family man and most of all my Gramps. He was truly the best grandfather anybody could ever wish for. I am so grateful that I got to have him in my life and I was able to do all these things with him. Love you, Gramps. I'm going to miss you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Now the girls are going to take a turn uh, to share about their dad. So I'm going to invite them to come. I wasn't sure I could do this, but I wanted to honor my dad as I remember him. My dad's name for me was Belle, or his scary Bell. He was larger than love to me in every way. He was my hero, my safety net, my rock, and my loving dad most of all. My fondest memories were weekends at the Border Power Club where he raced. It was a family affair with Uncle Dave, Auntie Lynn, and our cousins, Tavis, Brennan, and Craig. My dad was a man's man, and he loved speed, whether it was boats, planes, cars, or motorcycles. Me being a girl never stopped him allowing me to take the controls in his plane and doing the wormies or the butterfly. We used to do our Sunday breakfast runs on his motorbike, where I clung to him as we experienced the open road. It was exhilarating. At one point, he was importing fancy cars, and I was at that age where I didn't really want attention. And he knew this, but he still dropped me off at school in a bright red hot rod with white leather seats and gold exhausts and promptly hooted as he drove off, much to my embarrassment. <laughs> when boys started visiting, his hello was always followed by a stern look, and if you hurt my baby girl, it's you, me, and the cement. <laughs> my dad seldom got angry with me, except for the time he found out that I'd gone to numbers on the back of a 50cc motorbike without a helmet. I was called over the intercom and he was waiting at the door. He told me how disappointed he was and never spoke to me the entire way home. I was heartbroken. 
and obviously never did that again. My children, Aaron, Chelsea, and Murray, adored their gramps and nanny. They loved spending time with them and when Gary and I went away. They would order Nina's barbecue pizzas and my dad taught Chelsea how to play Sudoku whilst entertaining Aaron with stories of his weightlifting days. He was a great mentor to Aaron with his knowledge of the stock exchange. After, I lost my, after my dad lost my mom, we didn't think he would be able to carry on, but he was so fortunate to meet Glenda, who put that twinkle back in his eyes. Glenda, I personally want to thank you for sharing these past years with my dad and being with him right to the end. It wasn't easy, so I want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. Never a day went past where I didn't feel my dad's absolute love for me. He was a man with profound faith, so I know he will always be watching over me. I love you, Dad, till we meet again. Stay here. <laughs> I can't look up at you, but anyway. When I thought about writing a short message about my dad, it seemed an impossible task. I could write a book about him and all the wonderful memories he leaves behind. But instead, I decided to keep it short and sweet. And just say thank you to him. Thank you, Dad, for being a devoted and wonderful family man. Thank you for loving Mom with your whole heart. Thank you for loving us, your children, so unconditionally and with so much pride. Thank you for being that special bumpy to all your precious grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And thank you for choosing Glenda to be a part of our family. We all love and miss you so much already. Rest in peace, darling dad. I'm honored and blessed to call you my dad and I'll keep you close in my heart forever. Mark, won't you please come and share some of your thoughts? Good morning. Buck was my cousin, but he was also my friend. Basil, always known as Buck Osting, I never knew him as anything other than Buck was born in East London on the 10th of October 1940 and he lived 83 years. Buck was larger than life, both physically and in bearing. He always made an instant impression when he entered the room. People would say, who's that fellow? He was the elder of two brothers and David passed away during COVID a few years back. Buck was a family man and he met Heather while yet at school. They formed a deep and a lasting marriage of 54 years before Heather <coughs> passed on to glory some 10 years ago. The marriage produced the four children. You've heard all about them already, Mark, Wayne, Kerry, and Corrine. Many grandchildren followed and also grand, great-grandchildren. Buck was a big, strong man, brimming with courage, he was an entrepreneur, and he started many pursuits both by way of business and other activities. He became involved in weightlifting in the heavyweight division, speedboat racing, a little motor car racing, then on to acquiring his own aeroplanes, and you've heard a little of that. He was a hunter of birds. He loved to hunt birds, but not, a great, not very great at animal hunting because his heart was just too soft. He was a fine shot and represented South Africa as a shootist. He was the pilot of the boat that towed a German national 
to a world endurance record on, slal on a slalom ski on the Bridal Drift Dam. Buck purchased and sold many properties and was landlord to many a business and householder. He acquired a certain outboard motor agency for Southern Africa and spent the latter part of his life in the marine business. Many of us remember that. About 30 years ago, I had the joy of leading Buck to accept Jesus Christ as his personal saviour. When he did so, he told me he would change his life and lifestyle. And this he did faithfully throughout his life. He modified his behaviour and he sought to gain a deep and a life-transforming experience of being a Christian. He joined the Gideon shortly thereafter, and he remained a faithful servant of Christ in this ministry. Tens of thousands of Bibles, and I'm not exaggerating, were placed in the hands of grade eight school children personally by Buck. And only time will reveal what effect the Bibles have had in so many lives. The Gideons convey their appreciation of his service to, a young, to the young and impressionable lives that he touched. My wife, Val, and I did many foreign trips with Buck and Heather, visiting a variety of countries. Cruises were enjoyed together, and I fondly remember trying to equal Buck at the many dining halls of cruise liners. Needless to say, he left me feeling overstuffed while he continued to fill his big frame with delectable food. I remember one amusing occurrence when he and I were lazing next to the swimming pool on a cruise liner sailing up the Baltic Sea to St. Petersburg in Russia. The ladies had gone off shopping in the numerous shops on board the ship. The cruise ship staff had by then been with the cruise for about five days and they'd, they'd been summing up the passengers. One of the crew was then deposed to come and make an inquiry to us, could he ask us a question? That's the men. We agreed, and he sheepishly asked whether those two ladies, Heather and Val, were Hollywood actresses. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was based on. For the past 30 odd years, Buck and several older fellows like me have enjoyed a lunch together every week. Good and lasting friendships were built and he is sorely missed by us all. Buck stood with me through thick and thin. I had his back and he had mine. He seldom failed to involve me in his business and private pursuits, wanting assurance of his decisions, and I shall miss him greatly. Tragedy stuck the Oast, struck the Oasting family when Heather passed on very suddenly and unexpectedly. The light in Buck went out and he was but a shell of a man that he had previously been. Till one day about eight years ago when he took me, he called me up and he asked me if I'd go to breakfast with him. And sheepishly he told me of a new love in his life. Later Buck and Glenda were married and the old Buck began to emerge again. Today the family wished to record their gratitude to Glenda for the happiness brought back into Buck's life. Happy years were to follow until the ravages of older age began to emerge, which would ultimately result in Buck succumbing to dementia and other physical difficulties. During this time, Glenda rose to the occasion and steadfastly took loving care of Buck. In latter times, he needed a day carer and a night carer, and the family acknowledges the gentle care given to him by the carers. Today the Osting family are in sorrow, but also confidently know that Buck led a happy and a fulfilled life. He prepared for the life hereafter, leaving behind a legacy of love, of care, and of direction. The Bible in one scripture records, and I quote, being dead, yet he speaks. I would be remiss <clears throat> if I did not, on behalf of Buck, urge all here present to make sure that you have settled the personal issue 
of where you will spend eternity. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for all those who shared uh, such beautiful words. Um, it really gives us a, a good picture of who Buck uh, is and was. Um, I was very impressed uh, to see some photos of him uh, weightlifting. Uh, I always thought he was just involved in boats, you know, so I learned a lot uh, about Buck. This morning I want to read two scriptures to you. The first, uh, well known from 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I read from verse 6. For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. When we were singing the old rugged cross, I could not help but think how appropriate that um, uh, the refrain was, till my trophies at last I lay down, I'll cling, cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Paul's writing and he says he's being poured out like a drink offering and the time for his departure is near. He says he's fought the good fight, he's finished the race, he kept the faith and um, now there's in store for him this crown of righteousness which the Lord is going to give. The word departure uh, used here in the original language is a very interesting word for me. Um, perhaps understanding the word will help us understand a little more about Buck's passing. First of all, it was a nautical term. Uh, this word was used by sailors to speak of untying a ship so that it could sail. Ships we know are not meant to be moored in harbors but need to get out there. That's their uh, true design. We in East London are greatly privileged to watch ships disappear over the horizon. You'll see it leave the harbour, slip out of sight. But in truth, that ship is still sailing even though you can't see it. You see, when a sh ship leaves this harbour, it will be soon entering another harbour. On this side, we say goodbye. On the other side, someone is saying hello. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. It was a military term. This word was used to the taking down of the tents in order to move to another place. That is just what death is. A folding up of our earthly tent, says Paul, when talking about our bodies, to make a journey elsewhere. In 2 Corinthians, he speaks out of our earthly bodies as tents. Over the last while, I know you as a family and friends have watched 
Buck's earthly body deteriorate terribly. His tent destroyed by illness and sickness. This passage reminds us that now we know that if the earthly tent, says Paul, we live in is, is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. This is the writer of the book of Revelation. The old order of things has passed away. There's no more death or dying or mourning or crying or pain. For the new has come. It was an agricultural term. The word departure to a farmer meant the time of day when he would take the yoke off the back of his farm animals. When he took that burden off their backs, they used the word uh, departure to describe it. And he has the promise of Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's no doubt that over the last while, disease and sickness has caused back to become slightly burdened, perhaps confused, uncertain. But he's now found rest for his soul with the comfort of his maker. Like a ship, Buck has sailed toward another port. Like a camper, he's folded up his tent. Like a beast of burden, he's laid off his heavy burden and rests from his weary struggle. He fought the good fight. Life at times can be a fight. We all know that. It's a struggle. There are many battles on this side of heaven and a big key to success in the fight of life is to never quit. Listening to all of you say such things about your dad reminded me that he certainly wasn't a quitter. He was a go-getter and um, he fought valiantly through life to provide for those he was entrusted to care for. I think you have all learned the lesson of perseverance from Buck himself. I finished the race. It was an athletic term. Um, we know that athletes um, compete and they have to finish the course set before them. Buck, as you heard, was an athlete of quite some acclaim. And athletes have to practice to achieve. It doesn't just happen by accident. There's a lot of sweat on the way. But Buck has finished the assignment given to him by God. Buck has finished the tasks that God gave him. Loving wives, raising children, and even passing on the faith, as we heard, of the many Bibles placed in young people's hands. What I've learned over the years of watching the Comrades Marathon is it's not so much about how you start, but about how you finish. Back in terms of his faith, finished well. He was regular in church. I mean that sincerely. And um, Glenda, we're going to miss him. I know you more so than any others. He kept the faith. He was always pleasant, always had something nice to say to me at the door. And around him there was a calm that Buck was putting his faith into practice, assuring that his relationship with Jesus was just right. In concluding this morning, I want to remind you of the beautiful promise of our Lord. 
that we are his sheep. We are the sheep of his pasture, and we are promised that he knows each of us by name. That not once was Buck alone, but the great shepherd came and took him to the home he prepared for him, and he now rests in the arms of his maker. I promised to get to the point of hello and welcome a little earlier. The Lord has welcomed Buck. Hello Buck, well done, good and faithful servant. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Come and share in the master's happiness. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold all souls in life and we praise you for those who've shared this earthly life with us and have now entered into eternal life with you. Especially we want to thank you for Buck, for all that made him special and all that you have given him and accomplished in him and all that he has meant to those who knew and loved him. We thank you for his sense of humor, for his unwavering love for his children, his grandchildren, his spouse. We thank you for his caring and loving ways. And now, Lord, we thank you that death itself is conquered. Help us to release him into your care and keeping in the confidence that all life finds its fulfillment in you. We commend to you those who will miss back the most because they loved him so much. Grant that casting every care on you, they may know the comfort of your love. God of all comfort in the midst of pain, heal us with your love. In the darkness of sorrow, shine upon us as the morning star. Awaken in us the spirit of mercy that as we feel the pain of others, we may share with, the, with them the comfort we've received from you. Bring us at the last with all your people into the kingdom of your glory, where death itself is ended and every tear is wiped from every eye. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory both now and for all eternity. Amen. We're going to pray the prayer of committal, so if you're able to stand, will you please uh, do so and join me as we pray. Thereafter, the pallbearers will come and escort uh, back to the funeral car, and we will sing a wonderful hymn, Sweetly and Tenderly. Won't you please stand? Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor. Their deeds will follow them. Lord, we've entrusted our brother back into your hands. And now we commit his body to be cremated. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ who died was buried and rose again for each of us, and is alive and reigns forevermore. Jesus said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. Most holy God, you have brought us face to face with the mystery of death. Now we ask you to bring us face to face with the mystery of life. Let us be born again by a touch of your Holy Spirit upon our repentant hearts and let the glorious kindness of your face shine on us and we will be glad again. Let it be said of us that to live was Christ and to die was gain. And we ask this in your glorious name, Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask the pallbearers if they will please come to the front.
uh, to be assisted by Donnie. Just some logistical announcements. Uh, the family will leave the sanctuary first. Uh, please will you remain standing. And if you just walk straight across the lawn into the hall, uh, there will be some refreshments uh, provided by the family and the ladies of this church. And a big thank you uh, to, to Mafti. But as we leave, uh, there's a very special song that Glenda has asked us to uh, listen to. So we're not going to leave immediately. We're going to listen to a little bit of it, and, and then I will guide you out. Receive God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated while we listen to the song. Um,
Let's go to the coffee grind.